Father God, now we thank you for this day, God. We thank you for this time. Oh God, we bless your name, God. We give you glory on today because it belongs to you. God, we pray that you continue to, oh God, be with us and walk with us. And God, 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 on today, we pray that your word go out, God, and find the necessary and the source, God, that it need to target, God. We pray that a bow down head be lifted. Oh, God, we pray, God, that some wounded spirit be encouraged, God. And, God, someone say, what must I do to be saved? In the name of Jesus, we do pray, and we count it done. Amen and amen. Well, amen. What a blessing it is to be before you on today. We honor you, uh, our pastor on today, Pastor Pepina, for this opportunity. Amen, amen. We thank God for our shepherd here at Holy Nation. Also, amen, we just want to say good morning to everyone and then all of the beautiful ladies in the house on, the, on this morning. Amen. All of the ladies say, hey. All right, all right. That's just what I'm talking about. Amen. I just want to honor my beautiful mother that's here on today. I'm so excited. Amen. Because she pressed her way. Amen. And made her way here on today. And not only that, Mother Cecily, Mother Rollins, and to all of the women of God, we love you on today. We thank God for you. All right, all right. We're going to go hurriedly to 2 Timothy. 1, chapter 1, verses 6 through 7. Again, that's 2 Timothy, chapter 1, verses 6 through 7. Amen. And it reads, Therefore I remind you to stir up the gift of God, which is in you, through the laying on of my hands. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power of and of love and of a sound mind. Amen. And again, it says, I remind you to stir up the gift of God, which is in you. Amen. So for just a few moments, we want to talk about stir your pot. Stir your pot. Amen. Tell your friend, just talk it out. Say, stir your pot. Amen, amen, amen. When we think about the word stir, to stir, it simply means the beginning of motion, movement, shifting, uh, to agitate something, a brisk activity. But what I really, really love is it means to disturb. You know, so oftentimes people do things on today and they really don't want you to disturb them. Even though it might be wrong, it's two left shoes. They really, really don't want you to disturb them. It's to make it move. To stir something is to make it move. So the stirring that we're talking about on today is an agitation that will cause change. It will cause connection. It will cause a blending that will cause a coming together as one in the spirit. It will cause us to say yes to the Lord. A stirring that will cause us to carry out the assignment that God has given to us. Although it may be challenging, it may be hard, it may be uncertain, it may be a little confusing. But this is what we know. If we just keep stirring our pot, <laughs> if we just keep stirring the pot, that it will certainly touch our minds and keep our minds stayed on the great I am. Then we know also the stirring will not allow our assignment to settle down to the bottom of the pot and become stale and stagnated and no good for anyone. Have you ever noticed something? You know how we might have some soup laying around or something or oh, anything good, Jira, that's, and then all of the substance, the good things are down at the bottom. And you're like, okay, I got to stir this up. I got to break this up. I have to do something to get to the good stuff down at the 
the bottom because it has settled down to the bottom. Amen. So in order to stir, we must have a container. So I know you're wondering what in the world is going on up here on today. But we have containers. And not only that, if you have a container and you want to stir, you have to have something to stir with. Amen. You have to have something to stir with. So when we start talking about the container, when we start talking about stirring, we have val- we have uh, valuable in this earthen vessel, in this container. Yes, each one of us are containers. We carry the treasure that God has placed on the inside of us. And it's our responsibility to keep the gift God has given us activated and motivated and ready and ready to give it away to others. And we all have an assignment. Everyone in here on today have an assignment. We have the responsibility of being a light in a dark world. Oh, yes, and fulfilling the great commission and to speak life, to speak movement into a lifeless situation. And I know when we came in today, we all have some challenges. We have some things that we are facing. We have some things that we need to get rid rid of. Here in the scripture Timothy was facing difficult times because of persecutions. He was discouraged. So Paul is writing a letter to his spiritual son, if you would, to encourage him. Paul begins to encourage him by calling him into remembrance of his grandmother, Lois. And not only his grandmother, but his mother, Eunice how they had the faith, and he described it as an unbreakable faith. He was certain that the same faith that was in his grandmother and in his mother was in him. Have anybody ever called you out? I don't know about you, but oftentimes, and this has been a while back, I was in school, yes, I was, once upon a time. Amen, Sheila. Amen, once upon a time. And, you know, the teachers would call you out and say, I know your family. I know your folk. Don't you be cutting up. You can't. Oh, I'm so glad I know your people. I know Mother Rollins. I know what she stands for. I know Sister Thelma, what she stands for. I know your people. Don't come up in there cutting up. They will call you out. They will go back down through your line. I know what. I know you shouldn't be doing that. And that's what Paul was doing here. He was bringing back into remembrance. He was making him uh, remember. He said, I am reminding you the power of memory will cause your hands to move. If you just began to think about some things that people have done for you, it'll cause you to want to move out for them, right? And you say, oh, I got to do it because Sheila did this for me. Oh, I got to do it because I know Lady Todd did this for me. I got to move. I got to move because they did this for me. And so it is with God. If we just began to think back on what God has done for us, I know a lot of times we get all tied up in what's going on and what's not going on in our life, but through it all, you're yet here breathing. Through it all, through it all, I've learned how to lean and depend on God. So God has brought us through a whole lot. And all we have to do is remember I, I don't care what you say happened. It's, it's not too late. You're not too early. We can begin to stir our pot. So, in the scripture, Paul is trying to encourage Timothy. And so oftentimes, we might get a little discouraged. Amen. It wasn't Paul's responsibility to stir up Timothy's guilt. But it was Timothy's responsibility. Of course, we pray for one another. We encourage one another. We minister to one another. But it is our job, our spiritual fire burning to keep it stirred up, to keep the fire burning. And we must choose to remain stirred up, which means continued movement. If you just settle down somewhere, guess what? These bones going to get stiff. Oh, yeah, 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 they're going to get a little stiff. You're going to have to work it out every now and then. You know, I, I, okay, Shirley, okay, black belt, yes, I, I had all of that. But the thing about it is, it's been a long time before I did one of these chop chops. And so if you don't keep 
working on it, if you don't keep going to the gym, if you don't keep movement going on, something's going to settle down somewhere, and it's probably going to be in the crack of your knee, or it's going to be down by your ankle, or something's going to pop out, something's going to push out, and all of that's going to happen, but we have to keep it moving. So when we start to think about moving out for God, that's what we have to do. We have to stir up our pot. Now, 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 let me show you something. We have to have something to stir with. We cannot just walk around talking about, well, I don't know what I'm going to do, how I'm going to stir my pot. What The pot represents your vessel. It represents you. And the word of God gives us something to stir with. It gives us something. Listen, don't walk around with a big pot and you trying to stir it with this little spoon. First of all, the spoon is fake. You cannot fake out God. You can this spoon is plastic. It's gonna melt. It cannot stand the heat. It cannot stand the pressure. It cannot stand the temperature. We go through a whole lot of heat in our life. Uh-huh. I don't know about you, but the heat is on. We go, uh-huh, and I mean the heat is on. So don't try to stir down in your pot with a little plastic spoon. It just it won't work. The songwriter said it just won't work. It's not going to work. Not only that, don't try to get a bigger plastic spoon and think it's going to work. It's just a big, fake spoon. What are you saying, Shirley? In other words, you cannot fake out God. You might fake some people out. Oh, you can roll with that world. Oh, oh, uh uh-huh. But listen, you cannot fake God out. He knows your heart. He knows your mind. He knows where you go. He sees you in the corner, in the back, in the booth, in the dark. He sees everything. So while you're trying to hide, while you're trying to figure it out, just know he sees and he knows. So the plastic spoon is not going to help you at all. But listen, we have to stir our pot with something that's going to really get down in there. Now, this second spoon I have has some holes in it. We have to be careful not to let our substance, what is in us, our gifts, our callings, our talents, settle down to the bottom. And we try to go down in the pot and bring them up. And we can't bring up nothing but holes. We can't bring up anything. You know, over in this pot, I have a whole lot of things over in here. And over in this pot, it's, it's, it's some good stuff over here. It's giving. Oh, it's, it's, it's gr- gentleness. Everything is over in this pot. The gifts of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit, long-suffering, patience, joy, peace. Oh, my goodness, it's in this pot. But over here in this pot, in this pot, I have some confusion over here. The wrong ingredients are in this pot. Uh-huh, yeah. Uh, ditches, diggers. Oh, my goodness. Cheaters. Uh, confusion. Uh, steal, people that steal. Oh, oh, my goodness. All kind of stuff is in this pot. Now, what you do not want to do is take this over here and put it over here with this pot and then think you're going to come out with something tasting good because it's not going to taste good. So when we start talking about our pots, oh, 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 they may have gone through some stuff. They look a little rough. They had a little heat on them. Woo! You know that sometimes they said the taste is in the pot. You know, uh-huh, you know, a little rough around the edges. We, we may have gone through some stuff. We might not look like what we've really been through. But the thing about it, if you just began to work on your pot, <laughs> oh, my goodness, you can get a scouring pad in the spirit and just began to work on your pot. <laughs> if you just began to rub it down, if you just began to pray over in your pot, if you just began to do the things that you know you need to do in your pot, don't be jumping over here trying to take care of my pot. You're going to get a little confused. Because God called each and every one of us. Made us special. Made us unique. Don't worry about it. Don't even worry about it. Handle 
handle your pot. Take care of all your greens and vegetables or whatever's over in your pot. Pray as God has given you to pray. Oh, oh, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. Read your scripture. Do what God has called you, you to do. The right ingredients. Ingredients are a group of chosen items working together to accomplish an expected outcome. Now, 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 when we start talking about the Holy Spirit, when we get ready to talk about things that we need in our life, we must make sure we don't stir up the wrong thing. You know, have you ever been to a place and you drove up and you said, give me a Sprite, and you got that Sprite, oh, your mouth, your, you were just waiting on that, you know, that bur burn, you get right down in there, that, little, that burn that you get down in there. And then you take a big sip of it and you find out it's carbonated water only. And you say, oh my God, this don't taste right. Or you decided to pick up some lemonade and somebody forgot to put the sugar in it. It just don't taste right. So we have to be careful and make sure that we mix the right ingredients into our beautiful vessels that God has designed. So it won't taste horrible. Who will it taste horrible, horrible to? Other people. <laughs> Sometimes we don't even know. You know, they often say, if you point one finger at me, you got three coming back at you. You know, so other people can taste a good taste. Things in our lives may be bitter sometimes. Things might get horrible in our life. Maybe God is allowing us to taste the way, that way, to let us know that it is the wrong ingredient somewhere in our pot. You know, if you said things are just horrible in my life, oh, this don't taste right, this is not good, this is not right. You can, you can feel this is not right. Maybe God is saying that you have a wrong ingredient down in there. So maybe he's saying that cheetah had jumped over in your pot. And you try to stir it in, and it just won't work. It just won't work. Where are we today? What are we doing today? How are we handling the pot that God gave us? Look, sometimes, you know what? We need a little help, don't we? Lifting the burdens, the loads, the tribulations, the things that we face down here on earth. Oh, my goodness. Uh, uh, that's why I have two handles. It's not always just for you to pick up both of them. Somebody else might need to help you sometimes. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right to ask for help. Don't look. Ooh, not that this really applied to this, but it was a song out. It's a little worldly song. It's saying, I'm not too proud to beg. I'm not too proud to beg. But the only thing I'm saying is sometimes we need just a little help on our way. There are many ingredients, but let me just speak about one very quickly because we're moving. And that is faith. Faith is our foundation for this earthly journey. If you're going to put God in your life, you are going to have to have some faith. I'm not saying your faith is on the level of everybody or whatever, but you are going to have to have some faith because the word says uh, without faith it is impossible to please God. We can't afford to let our faith die out. We know that faith work without work is dead. When our gifts are just sitting around, lying around inside of us at the bottom of our pot, we need faith to disturb that place to disturb it, to shake it up. We believe, we believe that God can and will do big things, great things, wonderful things, faith. 2 Corinthians 5 and 7 says, for we walk by faith and not by sight. Listen, all of those big dreams, those aspirations that you have, women, things that we're looking for, for God to do in our lives. Women, it doesn't matter how old you are. Women, it doesn't matter how young you are. But my call is for the women, the women that want to move out and see some things happening, the women that want to march forth and say, listen, God, here I am. I'm your daughter. I'm your child. I place my will to your will. And God, you take over. You take control of this situation. Women. Amen. Amen. I tell them all.
all the time. Every red blood trophy ball woman loves a good man. Amen. A nice looking man. Oh, suited and booted man. A God fearing man. Oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes. We just so feminine that we drop a pen, we can't pick it up. Oh, we just love it. Amen. That's why we want to be on target. That's why we want to be on point. Amen. So God can put us and use us the way he wants to use us. Our destiny, our future is in his his hands. Uh Uh-huh. We walk by faith and not by sight. Faith. Make sure you stand on your faith. Make sure you have faith in your pot. Amen. Make sure now when you put faith in the pot, you check it for holes. Uh Uh-huh. All under here. Because if you put some liquid in here and to stir up something, you're going to need a little liquid for things to dissolve. For it to dissolve down in your spirit, to get all down into your bloodstream, your bloodline. You're going to need that. But let me tell you, make sure you don't have holes in your pot. Because the enemy desires to come and sift you as wheat. And so we want to be ready. We want to watch out for the enemy that's lurking around every corner. Don't don't be surprised when the enemy comes. Because the enemy is coming to do his job. And we don't even want to talk about the enemy because we know the enemy is going to be the enemy. But who we magnify is our great God, our great Savior who can keep. He, uh, he is a keeper. Uh-huh. That just keep us through the storms. He'll rock you in the midnight hour. He'll let you run and hide in his pavilion. He'll let you rest in his arms. When you don't know what to say. When I said, when you can't do nothing but moan it out, God will stand by your side. He, he's there for you to be your guide. He'll do. Oh, I felt a holler. So it came out. Hallelujah. Last thing. Fresh communion. What you talking about, Shirley? Communion that we take on first Sundays? Yeah, it's going to be fresh. We ain't going to take that. No. I'm talking about fresh communion with God. That's daily communion with God. That's spending time with God. Listen, you don't have to be stretched out and laid out on the floor and doing all that. You can talk to God when you're in your car. You can talk to God when you're exiting your door. And listen, at this day and time, this day and time, this season, Oh, when you dog in your door, you better be taking the blood with you everywhere you go. The blood of Jesus. That's what I say. Every door I go through, whether it's my car door, office door, I don't care my house door, I'm covered with the blood, Jesus. God cover us with the blood. Spend time with God. There's nothing like spending time with loved ones and realizing it's precious and I desire to be with you. Spend time with God. That's precious to him. Spend time with God in his word. Oh, yes, gather fresh bread for your own soul, not for somebody else. Have you seen somebody always get got faith for everything everybody else is doing? Oh, I know Joseph can get him a new car. Oh, he can get that muscle ride. I know he can get it. Oh, I know he can do this. I know he can do that. But when it comes to yourself, Because it takes more doing to have faith for yourself. Amen, amen. So we want to make sure we do that. The joy of discovering the different ways God speaks to us. Oh, it's such a thrill to hear his voice. The exciting and excitement of knowing that God has sent a word through a candy bar wrapper. I don't know about you all, but have you ever been there? God can speak through anything. Now I know. Now, when I was a young girl, I didn't understand, but now I know uh, that God can speak through anything. You could be going through something. God will speak through a candy bar wrapper and say, oh, no, Harry. Hear me here, just speak. He say, oh, no. Uh-uh, not today. Not today. God will speak through a bird. Oh, yeah, you could be feeling depressed. Just feeling like, oh, I'm the ugliest thing. You know women, sometimes we go like that. Oh, I'm just feeling some kind of way. I just don't, I don't feel right. I don't feel. He a little bird start chirping and say, pretty, 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 pretty. And you can hear just a good 
rock crying out. But if we listen real close, yeah, uh-huh, if we listen real close, we can hear the voice of the Lord. Uh-huh, it kindles us to be able to talk to him. Uh, and so when we talk to him, it kindles our fire, our passion. And, and I'm not talking about a fake fire. I'm not talking about something where people pretending. You know, sometimes it used to be, you know, well, you know, I'm not talking about anything. I'm just saying, through life, you know a lot of stuff. People, you know, get, oh, I feel that spirit. They just all on your feet. They just doing everything. <laughs> and then you like, what? I mean, they don't kick you. They've done everything in the spirit. And you like, uh-huh, what kind of fire is that? I don't know what kind of fire that might be. That might be a little fake spirit there, the fake spirit. You know, if you have a picture of a, of a fire, you know, somebody can draw fire. And it can be hanging on your wall or whatever, but it never burns anything. It never spreads. It just sit on the table or hang on the wall. Or where others admire it, where others can see the outward beauty how it blends in with the furniture, how someone else came or come to say, oh, you know, you need a little cleaning today. You need it. But the fire I'm talking about, nobody have to tell you anything. Yeah, nobody have to say anything. God knows your heart. You know how you are feeling. You know how you, what kind of relationship you have with him, a relationship that would dissolve bitterness and, and all type of things. You know, sometimes when we talk to God, God will work on us. He will give us a stir. He will give us sometime in the form of a person to come and stir our pot. The things that are on the inside of you that God has gifted you with. Ah, uh, administration, leadership, uh, the gift of wisdom, the gift of knowledge. All of these things, God will come and get some. Somebody will speak into your life. And you know, some plants, some water, but God gives the increase. Someone will speak into your life. And when they speak into your life, you might not even hear it right then. The devil might have it halfway stopped up. But all down the road, I can see a light. That, that used to be a song. All down the road, a light bulb will come on and say, you know what? It's time. It's time. It's time to make that change. It's time for me to do what I heard in my ear years ago or either just last week so we want to stay in constant commune with him so in closing i want to say sometimes that god will deal with our minds because you know the battlefield starts up here in the mind sometimes something in the mind in the mind you trying to in the mind in the mind you say you know what i'm going to get up and walk tomorrow i'm going to do this tomorrow i'm going to do this tomorrow and when tomorrow comes you say oh i'm going to do that the next tomorrow not this tomorrow i'm going to do it the next tomorrow the battlefield starts in the mind and so oftentimes uh, half of the battle is if you just can get out there and get started and the enemy know the moment you step out the but you move your foot in the right direction. I know it's not in the word, but it sounds good to me. If you make one step, he'll make two. Hey, yes, he will. Yes, he will. So I want to say this. Uh, when you start talking about the mind, the battlefield of the mind, you know we have a whole lot of stuff going on in our world. Well, let's just bring it on home in our state. Well, let's just bring it on home in our city, uh -huh, in our community in our neighborhood. We got a lot of stuff going on. And so, when we start talking about the mind, the human behavior, the human behavior, we have to be so careful because the enemy will have you calling right wrong and wrong right. Tell you this little story. That's just what it is, a little story. Brothers say, this man say, I have a brother, went to the psychiatrist, he went to the psychiatrist, he said, listen, I have a brother, and for two years my brother been saying he's a chicken. He think that he is a chicken. He get up in the morning crowing, he been walking around clucking, and my brother think he is a chicken. For two years he's been doing that. The psychiatrist 
Scripture said, why you wait so long? Why you wait so long to come to me and bring him? That's a long time. He said, you know I needed the eggs. Only thing I'm saying to you, sometimes we think we're talking to the crazy one. But no, sometimes they report stuff. They really the one crazy. The mind is a terrible thing. The, the lose. Listen, God will renew the mind. Huh? He will huh, bring back to your remembrance huh, the things that you need to do for him. Huh? And God is a way maker of whatever it is going on huh, in your heart, huh, in your mind. Huh? God will, uh, he will, uh, he will see you through. Uh, all you have to do uh, is lay it out before him. Uh, all you have to do is uh, begin to stir your pot. Uh, yes, God, uh, whatever is going on, uh, whatever's wrong in your life, uh, God, you put it in me. Uh, and God, I know you can straighten it out. Uh, this stuff that's down on the inside, uh, my vessel, God, uh, God, uh, this clay suit uh, that you gave me to work with, uh, oh, oh God, make a way for me, uh, bring me all through, uh, pull me on out, uh, help me, God, uh, when I feel like uh, I'm going to lose my mind, uh, when I feel like uh, I'm going under, you and you alone, uh, you're the one uh, that can bring me through, uh, and I thank you for it. Uh, give you glory for it. Uh, oh, God, we love you today. Uh, and our Father said uh, that he already loved us. Uh, and so, God, uh, as we began to stir our pot, as we began to lift up the things that we have in our pot, uh, God, we say, uh, we yield it back to you. Whatever it is, uh, whatever it is now, uh, we're going to give it back to you uh, in the name of Jesus. And, and God, as I go over here to this part, uh, oh God, uh, I may have been wrong in my life. Uh, and God, I'm going to throw it out. I'm throwing out confusion. Uh, I'm throwing it out. Uh, whatever, God, uh, you don't want me to have. Uh, I'm throwing it out. Uh, yes, I am. I'm going to say, I'm going to do it like you say I do it. I'm going to work like you say work. I'm going to teach like you say teach. Hey.